Welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We head straight to our second conversation where uh, we'll be looking at the concerns of the Omicron variant and other COVID-19 infection. Now, it's been recorded that Nigeria has uh, confirmed three cases of the virus. We have a guest who joins us, a professional, Professor Sondi Omilebu, who is a professor of medical virology at the College of Medicine, University of Lagos. Uh, and a hospital of virologists at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital. He's also a consultant, a virologist to the Federal Ministry of Health. Uh, good morning, Professor Sondio Milabu. Thank you for joining us. Yo. Good morning, Professor Sondio Milabu. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. It is my pleasure to join you. All right, so, so let's um, get your thoughts on the new variants and, of course, Nigeria confirming uh, three cases. Uh, what do you make of this, the Omicron, Omicron variant? Thank you very much. So we, we are just starting uh, naming the variants because many more are still coming because we know that uh, the nature of the virus is uh, to change from time to time. So as long as we have the virus moving from host to host, so the possibility is there that uh, we have uh, new features coming, which we refer to as variants. So Omicron is a normal because uh, it shows that the, 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 the SARS-CoV-2 changes with the different uh, proteins on its uh, surfaces that are already in existence. All right, Professor Omilabu, uh, so far the NCDC has confirmed them three cases. You know, of um, the three samples that were taken, uh, we understand that one of them dates back to sometime in um, um, October. But doesn't this suggest that the variant um, has actually been circulating in Nigeria for almost uh, two months now? And what are some concerns we should actually you know, be aware of? Well, uh, it shows that uh, we have not, we've not been doing sequencing uh, as we're supposed to do. Otherwise, we ought to have picked it much earlier. Uh, as we are speaking, we have uh, about four, four centers that are getting engaged with uh, genomic surveillance in the country. And I'm sure we are all busy working. Um, hopefully by now, because more samples are now being processed, and uh, we'll try, we'll try and we'll see how long we've been having uh, Omicron in our own uh, country. So that will feature in the next uh, one or two weeks. Uh, as I'm speaking now, I know in Lagos here, we're looking at all those positives, at least in the last two months, in our domain. So the fact that uh, they picked it uh, as far back as October, yeah, it's, it's not impossible. It's not impossible. So but invariably, many more variants are, are going to be, to, to, to be seen uh, as we move in with uh, more genomic uh, uh, studies. All right, so we still have COVID-19 to deal with. And uh, my question is, should workers who have been or who have not been vaccinated be disallowed from the office as we have actually seen, you know, the federal government treating federal workers? Um, I would not. Not support question uh, as an ethicist, but they should be engaged and uh, be educated on the need for them to get vaccinated. Uh, the like of a uh, micron is actually coming from those that are not uh, vaccinated. So the virus will move into them freely, and when they move, they, mu they mutate, they change freely. Unlike those that uh, are already, expo I mean, uh, 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 already taking the jab, but they are putting those that take the jab into a danger because when the like of Omicron or other variants emerge, their own so-called immunity may not be effective in controlling it. So that's the danger. So we need to cover all of us with the vaccine if you want to make a, a huge success of the vaccination. That's my take. So how then do we address the issue of uh, vaccine hesitancy? Because uh, uh, it seems to be a huge issue, and that's why you find that number of persons who have not been vaccinated, not just as federal workers, but in different sphere of our endeavors. 
Yes, we have to be very cautious uh, using the word hesitancy, where we don't even have enough vaccines to go right. So there should be a distinction between the two. Nigeria as a country should have enough vaccines available. And then, of course, they will now follow it up uh, with their uh, health education and jingles. People, will, they will come out. But we need not uh, to talk of hesitancy when people are yet to get to centers where they can readily get vaccinated. So let's make sure that we have the vaccines available. Then I know people will move to it. And they need to be persuaded. They need to be educated. They need to be shown data that for them not to be vaccinated, they constitute danger to the rest of the country, especially those that are taking the vaccine. Because it is through them that variants get out. And once the variants, the variants come in, the immunity of those vaccinated may not cover it. That's the danger. All right, Professor Omilabu, uh, but not so much is really known concerning this um, new variant, um, the Omicron, you know, but from what we have heard, it's um, highly transmissible. Since uh, just when, uh, how soon can we really know what to expect as regards, um, you know, the illnesses that this new variant can actually, you know, cause? Yeah, thank you. Yes, for now, we know that it is highly transmissible. It moves faster. But when we are now looking at the symptomatology, the virus uh, seems to be very mild uh, as uh, against uh, what uh, people are expecting, so, which is normal. Though we are still uh, working on the virus to see mm, further characteristics of the virus. But for now, the virus moves freely. But when I am now talking of uh, the symptoms or the severity, so we have, they, have not, they have not seen that one, especially from the South Africa that first reported it. And I'm still talking about um, the virus. You mentioned that uh, we, ha we seem to be having some sort of um, sequencing. That's the, the word you use, um, challenges, you know, since we could not really detect, for example, that, uh, you know, had, that was taking some time in October. We could not really know that um, the Omicron has been with us for a while. What are other public um, health uh, challenges that we should be worried about? Professor Milaba, are you still there? All right, Mercy, I will, we'll try and reconnect here with um, Professor Omilabo. But then it is really, really uh, something to worry about. Uh, the NCDC came out yesterday and said them that we had just, uh, we have like three cases of uh, this particular variant, the Omicron. You know, but uh, on further investigation, it was uh, revealed that um, one of the samples, uh, you know, was taken sometime in October, meaning that for over two months, uh, this new virus, you know, has actually been with us as a nation. Uh, you, you, you also uh, would want to agree with me that as much as we commend, you know, the effort of the uh, federal government and, you know, all stakeholders in handling this, uh, you know, virus, the COVID-19, uh, we haven't really been really great at it. I mean, yeah. if you look at our response to it, uh, number one, we constantly are talking about the issue of not having enough vaccines. vaccines yes. Now, you remember the conversation that we had here on this platform when we yes. talked about yes. the Omicron and the fact that um, the, 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 the best way to it, and he, the professor, has also mentioned this morning that um, uh, the way out of it is to ensure that everyone is vaccinated. So the point is, do, do we have, have enough, enough vaccine, mm. you know, to vaccine? We're looking at a population of uh, over 200 111 million persons yeah. according to you know the latest data from uh, the united nation so yeah. do we have enough vaccine you know to go around to vaccinate everyone to protect because if you look at the pattern in which according to research and reports uh, how you know this virus actually works it shows that for those who have not been vaccinated the stand you know a uh, 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 higher risk higher risks of you know contracting this virus and when it gets in it, you know it becomes more deadly and all of that yeah. but it's not that it cannot be curtailed so the point now is would be you know what are the policy measures that we have on ground you know to ensure that all of this doesn't happen yeah. uh, i'm hoping that uh, you know we get more response as soon as we connect with him yeah. now we have seen countries enacting travel bans and yeah. the question is how effective has this travel ban been over time yes so so um 
travel bans over you know over the years i mm. mean especially uh, with covid 19 and all the variants that we have experienced has it been very effective you also want to talk about uh, uh, there's also another pattern you talk about contact tracing how far have we fared That's with all of that thing, yes. if you know how effective it, it, it is so so, it so the, uh, in our response the fact that we still do we have what it takes for us to you know dictate the virus do we have to send the samples to other countries uh, to get you know um, the results so all of this are some of the questions that we need to answer but you know like everyone has stated that with the outbreak of COVID-19 when it came through in 2019 one would think that um, we would have actually been able to put you know the health infrastructure in Nigeria in place yes. well, would have actually had policies even with the budget and yeah. all of that but it constantly just shows that we're not ready and we're not really prepared right. you know for all let's of this. pose the questions now to uh, Professor uh, Omilabu just before we left off uh, we're talking about some some concerns that we have in the space of um, the you know nations and public health uh, you talked about uh, not enough um, you no know, inequity when it comes to vaccinations across the world but then again I used when when you were answering the question of um, Nigeria having had to be living with this the, um, variant for the past two months, you talked about sequencing and other challenges. And I posed a question to you just before we went on that break about what other concerns do we have to ensure that uh, at the public health level, we actually do our best to ensure that Nigerians are actually secure. I think we have lost him yet again. Uh, so. We need to try and get the professor back online because these are the you know, pertinent questions and that he needs to address because we seem to you know, be talking about uh, the virus. We seem to be talking about people being hesitant about it and yet uh, we don't even have enough um, vaccine to go across the, the country. And again, the federal government is barring its workers from you know, going to work. And, uh, you know, it's actually a novel at this point. I don't know if we should say COVID-19 is still a novel virus or uh, the fact the that we have, new, we to see. you mm. know, the, the new variant that we have. Because mm. we still have not, we're still yet to understand the patterns and the sequencing of how this virus actually gets to work. And that's why, you know, research will continue to go until, uh, would continue until we're able to, have a grip over all of this. Now, but best practice, I mean, uh, you know, all of the procedures has been put out, global procedures to yes. actually respect, would include washing your hand. These are just hygiene. Constant washing your hand, be paranoid with washing your hands all the time. Like have, your paranoid with it, like yes, have your sanitizers with mm. you. And then, you know, the issue of wearing of your nose mask. Now, uh, another major concern for a lot of people is that, I mean, we're at the festive period again. Yes. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of conception, movement, of misconception, and all of that. And all of that but really i'm thinking that we we constantly stick with all of those procedures of washing the hands uh, maintaining that hygiene and the constantly steps. wearing the nose masks and you know respect the social distancing as much as we can then get the vaccination we also should be thinking at this point in time we should have been considering as you know the giant of africa having you know the booster shot but there's no way you're going to talk about the booster well, shot if, you have have a, if you've not even gotten you know a lot of persons are yet to be vaccinated second, yeah, of taking vaccine. the first dose and not to even talk about the second, second dose yes. so uh, but but the fact that you're we're constantly dependent you know on the uh we're dependent on the international China, community and, and other parts our, of the world you know to get vaccines, the vaccine yeah. is actually very uh Worrying and uh, you it should know, be looking it's a big issue. And, you know, so at this point in time, it still, it still brings us back to the issue of saying, do we have what it takes? Are we putting policies in place at this mm. point in time to ensure that we can handle our issues? Because we will blame them. And when you know nations come together, they would always you know think about their interests. The United States would want to vaccinate her yeah. own citizens, and every other person would want to take care of theirs before they begin to look at you know the third world country. All right. So, Professor Omilabi, uh, I trust we have you right now. Uh, we have been bantering concerning this particular uh, variant. I just wanted to get your thoughts as we uh, wrap up on this um, session. You know, yes, the right. challenge, the concern yes. that we had before we went off, I was asking you what should we be focusing on on our nations and public health, um, you know, approach. Yeah, thank you. You have, you have been mentioning some of those uh, uh, options before us. I, 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 I continued and joining this discussion while uh, the network uh, pushed me away. Um, actually, public health should be the one driving the. Uh, we need to take the message to the nooks and crannies of the country that there is COVID. COVID is still very much around. And of course, the best option is for us not to even get it. Not to get the virus or the disease is uh, the one that is most efficacious. 
So you wouldn't need to manage it if you don't have it. So people should try as much as possible to keep to all those measures put up by the presidential screening uh, committee, the steering committee. Uh, the face mask to be wearing it when going into the public. The issue of social distancing. Then, of course, hand washing frequently. And, of course, we should not embark on uh, any trip to anywhere we feel that is going to call, uh, call, cause a crowd. So once we move away from all these places, we'll be running away from the virus. It's better not to have the virus than to be managed the disease. And so that's the, uh, the, the, the best way out of it. And then, of course, as a country, we need to be monitoring the variant circulating in the environment. So it's very, very important. We need to be monitoring the circulating uh, uh, strain in our environment. And then, of course, people need more of health education. Health education, they need to get, let them know that COVID-19 is around and people should try as much as possible to prevent themselves from contracting it. Okay, and that's the best solution to it. Just before, um, you know, we coast it down now, do you think that Nigeria should enact, you know, travel ban, uh, bans just as you have other countries, or should we, uh, you know, be looking at locking down? Um, there is no cause for that right away. Uh, it's because of Omicron. There's no cause for either travel ban or lockdown. Because from what we see, like I said earlier on, there will be still many more variants coming. All we need to do is to be monitoring them. Let's know those ones that are, will be more dangerous in terms of uh, hospitalization. Now we are talking of uh, Omicron. They've not been hospitalized in South Africa where they've had hundreds of cases. So that's to tell us that all we need to do is keep monitoring our environment to make sure that we're taking a close uh, monitor, checking of the, the strain circulating in the environment. That's all we need to do. All so right, we, need, we don't need to lock down. We don't need to uh, put a travel ban. All right, thank because you. Indeed, indeed, we don't need to put a travel ban, as um, the professor has suggested, and uh, we need to just work on our monitoring to ensure that we know, you know just where we are headed. We must say a very big thank you to you, Professor Sunday Omilabo, um, virologist. Uh, thanks for your input and your thoughts on this particular discourse. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Well, that's, right. a, that's a much we can take at this point in time. We do appreciate you for being part of the conversation and following the show 7 a.m. up until this time. We'll definitely come through tomorrow with the Friday edition. Uh, in case you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow our social media, Facebook and Instagram. It's at Plus TV Africa and the YouTube web, Plus TV Africa Live Fire. I am Messi Boko. Do have a great morning. And I'm Justin Academy. Thanks for being a part of the show. Join us on the news talk of the hour. Bye for now.